Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com. Uh, gonna talk about twisted trees and electromagnetic warfare in the Olympic National Forest. This is something I've been doing a bunch of research about. Uh, I've been barely waiting to get to this. Um, this is gonna be a crazy video. Uh, you're not gonna believe what you're about to see. Um, before I do that, I'd like to mention that everything you're about to see is uh, free of charge, adver advertisement free, and I'm supported by my patron patrons on patreon.com slash climate viewer, or you can buy me a coffee if you really appreciate this video. Um, this is a pretty important one. Uh, Meteorological mystery surrounds what caused massive tree fall in northwest Washington. Um, this is pretty nuts. You know, I was surprised when I saw this. Um, pretty crazy stuff. I'm just going to play a little bit of this video. Mm -hmm. Look at that tree. I mean, it's literally twisted. You can see the twist in it. Um, so they're saying it was microburst, that it was freaking, uh, you know, just a freak of nature mystery. Uh, meteorologists haven't been able to figure it out. Well, I think I've got a raging clue, and I think I'm going to provide a little bit of evidence, and maybe you'll agree with me on this one. So where are we talking about? This is near Lake Quinault. Um this is on the Washington Peninsula. You can see I'm over here on Climate Viewer 3D. Uh, this is Washington State. We're in the corner of uh, America. And there's Lake Quinault right there. So this is where it occurred. And, you know, I had to, you know, a good friend, Alana Freeland, had been mentioning something about the electromagnetic warfare stuff going on up there. And I wanted to take a look. So I've got January 26 up on the screen. And I just wanted to take a look at what the weather looked like that day. So this is the cloud cover. And ooh, what do we see here? A bunch of gravity wave looking weird stuff. Um, so let's go to the day. Go to the 27th. This is the actual day it occurred. And as you can see, this is what the weather looked like. Completely overcast. Um, you know nothing extremely out of the ordinary looking here aside from of course the gravity wave action happening down here those are also known as lee waves so i had to say to myself well what could possibly be the cause of all this and you wouldn't believe what i found i don't think you're gonna believe what i found um Exclusive Navy secretly conducting electromagnetic warfare training on Washington roads. This is dated March 7th, 2016. So I was digging through this article and reading some of the Freedom of Information Act requests. I read all the emails um, and some other reports. And it turns out that the U.S. Navy is doing a electromagnetic warfare testing um, in the Olympic National Forest. And if that weren't weird enough, it's going to get even weirder. So I was looking through their reports over here, and I came across this. This is from Truthout, um, you know, the same people that wrote this article over here, truthout.org. And when I looked into this, of course, it's all sideways. So for the you know purposes of this video, I went and I converted all of those to images. So I changed the PDF to images and you wouldn't believe what I found in there. So circled areas of the roads that look promising for the event. Uh, Lake Quinault pro proved usable. What? So... 
the U.S. Naval Electromagnetic Warfare decided they were going to drive trucks along the roads near Lake Quinault to do weather. Well, they didn't. They don't claim that it's weather modification. They com, They call, claim it's electromagnetic freaking warfare. And as you can see, there's Lake Quinault right there with a big circle there and a circle there. This is the same area where these trees were all twisted up. So um, that's your that's your your first raging clue that something's up. That this is not some kind of grand mystery. Uh, maybe there's some military involvement in these freaky, twisted, massive trees and the microbursts associated with it. Um, you could flip through this whole thing and, you know, there's a whole bunch of other circles on here, but they show, you know, trucks pulling what appear to be electromagnetic warfare trailers. And, you know, I happen to know a little bit about this sort of thing. So let's go back over here to the thing thing. Here's another one. This is from the actual environmental impacts um, statements from the U.S. Navy on where they're going to do their electromagnetic warfare. And what do you know? There's Lake Quinault area right there. Here's a blow up of it over here. And what do you see? What is this pink line right here? It says Olympic MOAB. Scroll down here. Pink is military operations area. So that's where the military was operating, was in that freaking area, in the same spot where I just showed you in the picture. You know, they said very clearly, hey, Lake Quinault uh, would be a great area to do this. So there we go. Bring that up again. Lake Quinault proved useful. Um, so is this a coincidence? I'm thinking it's not a coincidence. I mean, when you're up there doing electromagnetic warfare and you have major uh, freaking downbursts, twisting massive trees, I mean, absolutely massive trees. Do I really need to go back and show you this thing? I mean, look how big that damn tree is. Um, that's amazing to me. So I was, you know, digging a little further into this, and I'm going to provide some background for everybody here. Help stop electromagnetic warfare on the Olympic National Park. Um, this is a serious issue. Uh, they had a public commenting period on this. You know, most of this has already passed by. Um, they, they're at it. They've been at it before. They even asked for public comment on this. Proof's in the pudding. Um... Pacific Northwest Electromagnetic Warfare Range Environmental Assessment 42759. Um, and you can see right here, gpo.gov, CFR 2000, blah, blah, blah. You can read all the rules and everything that they, you know, where they told the public that they were going to do electromagnetic warfare over the Olympic National Park. Now, they said that they were going to do this via the roads, okay? So, you know, they're talking about double lane paved roads, paved roads, gravel roads, crossed roads. So, this tells me it's not just planes they're talking about from the ground. So, what are they talking about from the ground? Well, luckily for you, I did an article over on climateviewer.com. Get that out of my face. What is this? I got the menu up and I was scrolling around here. Let me refresh the page. Harp on a boat, ionospheric heaters go mobile. So most people don't know this, but the reason why the U.S. Um, Air Force uh, sold Harp to the University of Alaska is because they no longer need Harp. They've moved on to new ways to manage the ionosphere and do their electromagnetic warfare. And right here at the very top of the page is trucks and trailers. Air Force aims for weather control. Uh, don't believe me? There's the article. This is from Defense Tech at military.com. Air Force aims for weather control. Back to the slides here. Um, someday the U.S. military could drive a trailer to a spot just beyond the insurgent fighting and within minutes reconfigure part of the atmosphere, blocking an enemy's ability to receive satellite signals, even as U.S. troops are able to see into the area with radar. In the Owning the Weather 2025 papers, there's an operational uh, analysis of 2025 paper that isn't Owning the Weather in 2025. It was in the Air Force 2025 series. 
And that's exactly what they talked about. They called it sanctuary base. And it was a way to control the ionosphere so that only our signals can get through and we block all the others. That's exactly what the U.S. Navy is doing with this electromagnetic warfare testing ground. Reconfiguring parts of the ionosphere and using jets called growler jets um, to, you know, do radio transmission blocking, blah, blah, blah. Now, did this have an effect on the weather? Did this cause the microburst that ripped these trees out of the ground, twisted them around? You be the judge, but here's how it goes. This scenario may not be far away, says defense tech pal Sharon Weinberger in this month's edition of the always excellent Defense Technology International. An engineer with Research Support Instruments, RSI, in Princeton, New Jersey, recently completed the first phase of work for the U.S. Air Force-sponsored project called the Microwave Ionosphere Reconfiguration Ground-Based Emitter, or Mirage. Mirage is harp on a trailer behind like a Humvee, or the truck in the picture. You know, the, the truck in the picture I showed just a couple minutes ago. Here we go. There's the truck. There's the trailer. Um, so how does it work? The work involves using pla plasma and ionized gas to reconfigure the ionosphere. Mirage would employ a microwave transmitter on the ground and a small rocket that shoots chaff into the air to produce about a liter of plasma at 60 to 100 kilometers, 36 to 60 miles in altitude, changing the number of electrons in a select area of the ionosphere to create a virtual barrier or an artificial ionospheric mirror, just like HARP does. So this is using sounding rockets and freaking HARP on a freaking Humvee. Um, this is exactly what they do at the HARP facility in Gakona, Alaska. They have the poker flat rocket range. They shoot sounding rockets into the sky. They microwave the chaff and the aluminum and barium, trimethyl aluminum, lithium. All of the chemicals they shoot out of these sounding rockets is exactly what they're saying here. Mirage would employ a microwave transmitter on the ground and a small rocket to shoot chaff into the air to produce a liter of plasma, um, changing the number of electrons in a select area of the ionosphere to create a virtual barrier. Ionosphere reconfiguration, re reconfiguration offers two major applications of interest to the military. Bouncing radars off the ionosphere, also known as over-the-horizon radar, and the ability to jam signals from global positioning satellite systems, according to John Klein, the lead investigator for Mirage. I wrote this article back in 2014. Um, but that's not all. So, is this a real thing? You bet your butt it is. Here's uh, over on my scribd. You can see uh, that I don't have a date on this. It's somewhere in there, I'm sure. But this is another article on it. Just over the horizon. This is the original article from Sharon Weinberger. Someday the U.S. military could drive a trailer to a spot just behind insurgents, blah, blah, blah. So that's where this all came from. Mirage. And this is their illustration of a scaled up 45 kilowatt experiment that produced about 20 liters worth of plasma. Um, you can, all the links are already in the details. This, this will be posted on climateviewer.com as an article in the near future. So it, you know, is, where did this come from? Well, over, if you go to SBR, SBIR.gov, you can see that originally it was called a plasma point defense. And, of course, that's Research Support Instruments. Uh, John Klein, they were paid $69,969. Because we're all getting 69 here, apparently. Um, and it says, you know, that they were going to create a large volume plasma generator configured into plasma point defense cannon to intercept incoming kinetic threats. So, literally... A freaking microwave of doom to shoot down mortars and missiles. 
Um, but then that was 2004, and that's John Klein. Here's his phone number, and it's Klein at ResearchSupport.com. Um, and then the next one up is, wait for it, the Microwave Ionosphere Reconfiguration Ground-Based Emitter, Mirage. Um, and this was 2005. For that, they were paid $99,953 by the Department of Defense Branch Air Force. Um, so this is a real thing. Harp on a freaking trailer, pullable, um, you know, we've got, hey, we're going to use uh, roads near Lake Quinault. It's in the electromagnetic warfare testing ground. Um, this is not a coincidence for me. You know, like I, I remember everything and it's all written down for you guys to read. But here's where it gets really weird. So you guys might know Rosalind Peterson. She's a personal hero of mine. She passed away recently. Um, God rest her soul. She did a lot of work for all of us. But this is a smoking gun kind of weird scenario for me. And I talked to Alana Freeland about this and tried to get an answer as to why she deleted her U.S. Navy page. As you can see here, it says access denied. And this is at agriculturedefensecoalition.org slash content slash U.S. dash Navy dash new. When I emailed her and I talked to her about it, she said, well, I'm redesigning my website, so that's why it's not there. But, of course, I backed that up on archive.org, so this is what the page actually looks like. And as you can see, let me close this out, go to the navigation. Um, here it is. It's a home contact geoengineering weather modification U.S. Navy. Uh, on our current page, it says home contact geoengineering weather modification honeybees. It skips right over it. So I just typed it in there. Honeybees weather modification. In the middle was U.S. Navy. This page has been deleted from the internet. So you're, you're probably, some of you are probably going to see this for the first time. But on here, she talks about U.S. Navy escalates warfare testing in the Pacific Atlantic Gulf of Mexico 2013 through 2015. And at the bottom, she's got this great infographic. And, you know, I personally um, use this uh, to argue with some of the people who hang out in Mount Shasta, uh, you know, saying, hey, have you ever considered the fact that the U.S. Navy is right off the coast doing all kinds of crazy, you know, stuff? Maybe you want to consider that. So this is what the image uh, looks like up close. Let's see if we can get that up. This is the actual PDF. And lo and behold, back in 2013, she was already talking about this map. Look familiar to me? You look familiar to me. I just showed it to you. Um, but as you can see, that's not the only place where they're doing this at. It's all the way down the Pacific coast. This is the Southern California Range Complex. Point Magoo Range Complex, North California Range Complex, and of course, up here, the Northwest Training Range Complex Expansion, where the U.S. Navy wants to do all this stuff. So, this has been in the works for quite some time. Um, they started this around 2012, 2013. Um, and it's not a surprise to me to see that the Lake Quinault area has twisted up trees when we know that all of this has been going on. And of course, what does she say? Um, U.S. Navy should be preserving our oceans and all marine life, not destroying them. In the name of war practice, U.S. Navy toxic chemical menu increases yearly with ocean dumping and disposal electronic electromagnetic weapons testing submarine warfare exercises experimental weapons testing missile exercises sinking exercises gunnery exercising bombing exercising shock and awe lasers and sonar and then of course on the east coast same deal boston range complex all the way down virginia jacksonville so the U.S. Navy is out here constantly spraying chaff. You know, if you don't know what chaff is, it's filled with aluminum and plastic. And you're breathing that stuff because it blows over land. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up. So there's her image for that. 
Um, this is from the Sierra Club, Navy Warfare Training on the Olympic P Peninsula. Um, and not only are they using the ground-based, uh, you know, trailers and such, they are also using what's called a EA-18G Growler Electromagnetic Warfare Plane. So this is an F-18 Hornet that has been modified for the purposes of electromagnetic warfare. Um, you can see it right here. This is on Boeing's website, the EA-18G EA Growler Jet. And it's got all these advanced features, you know, like, oh, we've got this. And over here is our airborne electromagnet, electronic attack um, instrumentation, um, self-protected time-critical strike support. Comes with a harm missile. It's a anti-radar missile. So block incoming radar from the ground. Fire a missile that is designed to home in on the the ground um, based radars and destroy them and block electromagnetic signals, similar to what was talked about with the Mirage thing. So details are all provided. There's uh, the Wikipedia page on the Growler jets. Um, it comes with something called the Next Generation Jammer. It's an ANALQ-99. Uh, um, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy stuff. You guys look this stuff up. You come over here, do a Google image search on it. You can actually see the inside of one of these things. Um, pretty crazy stuff. Uh, where's that photo at? Right here. Oh, don't. Yeah, we're using. Of course, I'm using an ad blocker. Don't be rude. I'm in the middle of a video here. Let's just cheat and do this. Boom. So that's what it looks like, and you see right here, high band steerable antennas, um, processing cards. It's basically, you know, a couple of radars inside of that uh, big long thing on, underneath the wing. So let's just review real quick. Big twisted trees, they happened w near Lake Quinault. That's where the electromagnetic warfare testing ground is for the Navy. They're doing it with these uh, ground-based emitters as well as jets. And Lake Quinault's mentioned right there in the reports that came from the U.S. Navy. Um, and, you know, this is, this is a real thing. Harp on a boat, harp on trucks and trailers, harps on satellites. Um, I don't find this to be a coincidence. When you're, when you're screwing with the weather, when you're doing electromagnetic warfare, um, our weather is, you know, pretty much three parts, dust, water, and electricity. And if you're screwing with the electrical currents in the sky, um, the chance of having microbursts, downbursts, doing crazy stuff like ripping monumentally large trees out, and then having guys over on the Weather Channel going, it's a freaking meteorological mystery. Um, that's because these guys don't research things like this. And now that you know the full story, I hope that you guys will look into this because I, I find it offensive that, you know, the military has its way with our environment already. Um, yeah, I understand that the need for the military to test these, these types of equipment but God forbid, do they have to do it right over America? I mean, go find some island in the middle of the frickin' Pacific to do this stuff. Not near people, um, and especially not in our national forests. You know, trees are important. You guys know how much I care about trees. And this that's why this story stuck with me. Um, this was originally posted February 8th, 2018. And it's taken me a moment to get around to doing this video because I wanted to have all the facts I hope that you guys appreciate um, this information. I hope you'll share it. I hope that you'll support me on Patreon. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you really enjoyed this video, buy me a coffee. I'd greatly appreciate that as well. So sharing is caring. Please share this video. Please help us, you know, put a stop to the electromagnetic warfare testing um, that's going on over there because... This is unacceptable. Um, and, I, you know, I really hope that, you know, with some awareness with people looking into this, that we can bring more attention to these growler jets, these ground-based emitters like Mirage, 
and all of the freaky electromagnetic warfare that's affecting our weather. Um, because, you know, the military's intentions clearly are to screw with the weather. Um, you know, Air Force aims for weather control, and boy, they seem to have gotten it this time. Um, they're ripping up trees and screwing stuff up. Thank you guys for uh, paying attention, staying up late with me. This is a very late night video for me. Um, please share this video. And of course, remember, even with the military, if you're going to go complain about this, remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work. So come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.